Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The FIFA 23 market continues to drop and player prices continue to go down as we are in the middle of this World Cup, pre-World Cup market crash panic, whatever you want to call it. Basically getting good content that we didn't expect during a slow promo week and having less gameplay demand and of course just uh, some solid content in a time where we didn't really feel like we were going to, but mostly because of that impending World Cup content that we do think will impact the market a lot. But even though we had prices dropping yesterday, there were some opportunities to make coins on multiple areas of the market. I was able to do a little bit of that myself with some really rare cards capitalizing on some fluctuation and panic selling. So I look for more of that today and I want to talk you guys through that a little bit more, but also talk about maybe a little bit of an investment potential on some fodder that hasn't moved yet, but other fodder has been moving. And maybe EA is going to drop more upgrade pack SBCs because we've been surprised now Friday and Saturday, two days in a row with upgrade packs. First, the 80 plus upgrade regular. And then yesterday, the 80 plus team of the week upgrade is EA dropping all these upgrade packs early this week? I'm not entirely sure what's going on. EA has just been going definitely away from the normal schedule with their content recently. So that just makes the whole market, again, even more uncertain and a little bit more scared. And that just, those are the two words I would use to describe what is going on in the market right now. So I want to talk about all that and a potential Ansu Fati SBC for maybe a decent day of content on Sunday today. So if you're excited for the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it. And honestly, let's just take a look at the market and again, try to just take a hold and grasp the situation at hand. We have card prices continue to drop. That's the bottom line. Look at Mbappe, 1.265. Yesterday, Mbappe started off in the early morning on Saturday at 1.38 mil. Yeah, 1.38, 1.39. And he dropped down all day. A lot of prices yesterday got really low around 6 p.m. content time. That's the 1800 hour here. 6 p.m. content time is when a lot of prices got really low. Now also, small tidbit of information. If you're in the US, uh, or if any of your clocks are changing today, make sure you adjust because uh, the content time for Eastern time zone will go back to a 1 p.m. Eastern uh, because our clocks go back uh, tonight, this morning, whatever time you're watching this video. So make sure you kind of recognize that and, and be aware for that. But that was a low point on the market yesterday, right around content for so many different cards in this game. Now, there were fluctuations before that, though. Like, um, where's, where's Cancelo? Cancelo yesterday had a really, really good early rise because even though we say there's not as much gameplay demand, there's still gameplay demand. And since we didn't have much supply at all, a gold Cancelo went from 66K yesterday all the way to 74 in the early morning hours, 11 a.m. UK, and then proceeded to drop down all afternoon and into the evening, hit a low point at content, and then shot back up for a little bit, and then has now dropped back down. I would look for maybe, just maybe, it's going to be on a certain specific few gold cards today on Sunday it's probably not going to be as easy as it was yesterday, right? Hyunmin Sun went from 34 to 38K, back down to 33, back to 36. I don't think that all of these gold cards are going to rebound up as much today on Sunday as they did yesterday. That's what well, I would just say be a little bit careful with some of these cards today. I'm, I'm just trying to take a look through some of the more meta ones, even if they're really cheap. You could see a few rebounds, but the only reason that would make me want to buy a card uh, that is a gold card for a rise today on Sunday would be if it's really rare and if it's down even further than what it was yesterday. Like Mbappe is one that's a little bit interesting to me, but there's way too much tax there and probably you're not going to end up making too much off of it. But like, I think this Vinny Jr. about 10 minutes ago was like 119K, maybe a hundred and like 116 or 117K for this Vinny Jr. would be a price that I'd be like, okay, I think I might be able to sell this at like 130 or you know if there's a slight rise in the market today or something like that you could have a potential for him to go up like 10k and collect some profits there there could be some of those movements today with golds but what i would really start to watch out for is the continued panic selling on the rare cards on the market actually as i'm recording this video right now yaga toure was just around 1 million coins and i don't have enough coins in the moment because i'm you know trying some other flips but he was like literally 1.01 .01. i might even have it on my transfer list uh, we have 1.01. You can see it right there, right? 1.01 mil for Ayatore. He's got one here at 103, but a couple cards away from being almost back to 1.08. So if you bought this at like 1.01, .01, you might have potential to flip it if he can maybe go back to 
1.08, 1.09, and make like 30,000 coins a card or something like that. Again, that's the risky way to trade in this market, but it, it absolutely works. That's what I did yesterday. I mean, by the way, it's great to be back home, back in the normal setup. You guys are probably like, finally, Nate has his legit mic and it sounds decent again. But uh, I was sitting on the tarmac yesterday in a, in a plane ready to fly home and I picked up a Mateus, a Butragueño, and a Joel Cole. The Butragueño I broke even on. The Mateus I actually made about 30k on. I bought this for low 600s. Uh, and the Joel Cole I bought this for like 160 something. Sold it at 187. And I'm trying the same thing with Robbie Keane because he's kind of low. So I'm listing him for lazies right now. But hoping that he, he maybe has a quick rebound after the panic selling that's happening to him. That's the stuff that you can do to make coins right now on this market in a riskier fashion is try to time the low points. One card that I was trying to watch yesterday that I ended up buying those two icons instead, but ended up being a really, really good flip was this uh, Mohamed Salah out of position card. He went from like he was over a million coins early in the day yesterday. He's 960 right now. He's basically he's still at a mill. There's a couple at like 990, right? He was 890. He was under 900,000 coins. I actually want to show you his graph because it was pretty nuts. This type of trading works best on the rare cards all the time. But look at this Salah card, right? He got he was 1.12, right? 1.12 dove all the way down to 891 and then exploded right back to a million coins where he's been since we had that crazy hour of panic. That was a really, really low point in the market yesterday. Do I think that that 1 p.m. content time today could be a really low time in the market again? I do. Uh, it just depends, right? Again, it's just very risky to be holding on to cards right now in this game. So if you see a card that you bought to try out for your team or something, bounce back up a little bit. I would take the cash. I'm not expecting a huge market rise overall throughout this week. I think that some prices will go up a little bit. Uh, but I'm not expecting Kyle Walker to go back to 120K where he was before all this panic happened, right? No, he's maybe going to go back to like, I don't even, like 95 or maybe maybe at the most like 97,000 coins. That's the kind of thing I'm expecting throughout this week. And probably not even that much, right? Probably prices are going to stay pretty stagnant on your meta cards and maybe even drop further depending on what content gets released. So that's why it's just very risky to be trying to trade and make coins with a lot of stuff right now is because there's still a lot of volatility in the market and a lot of people aren't buying because they're still sitting here and waiting for that upcoming content with the World Cup promo that we would expect to get more news about maybe Wednesday of this week, maybe Thursday we get some loading screens and more panic created then. So that's why I would just continue to sit tight on this market and just, again, the thing that EA has been doing really good over the past two days, like we said, we just had some unexpected SBC content. So you know, SBC fodder is going up because of the 80 plus team of the week pack. And, and then maybe there's more SBCs to come this week that EA will use as like a last chance opportunity, as we even mentioned in yesterday's video, to drain some coins off the market. That's why for a more safer investment at the moment or a safer way to try to make some of those coins back that we have lost or just make coins in general, maybe some SBC fodder is the move. Now, I want to talk about the 80 plus because it was unexpected yesterday for sure, right? Every single time we've had this SBC in the past couple weeks, it's been on a Monday. It's been on a Tuesday, right? And EA dropped it yesterday on a Saturday, which was kind of out of nowhere, but it fits the scheme of how EA is doing content right now. Very unexpected. The packs in the store, the upgrade packs on a Friday, this SBC yesterday doesn't make sense. So what's not going to make sense today on Sunday that they're going to do? Let's find out, right? But 84s went up a lot yesterday. If you take a look at the index 84, it spiked because people love this 80 plus team of the week. If you invested in 84s, hold the line. They're going to go up further today. The only thing that would make them go down today is if we had a really solid pack supply SBC, which I do think that we could have some sort of pack supply SBC today. We had the World Cup warm up challenge number one on Friday. Uh, you know, they usually do like one of these every other day or they space it out for a couple days in between. So maybe a little bit of pack supply today. We'll just have to see what content EA put out. But I still think that I would hold the 84s. I still think that we're going to get some other sort of either an 85 plus team of the week again, a hero pack again, or an icon pack again, before we get to next week's World Cup content. So that's why I think that some of the fodder market, although it is up a bit right now uh, on the lower tier and on the very higher tier, I'll talk about that in a second, but 84s for me, 
it's risky to buy them unless you can get them on like bid or snipe like 2.5k i think these will go over 3,000 coins uh in the coming days but i still think that like 86 87s and maybe even 85s are low enough where you could try to get some on bid and at least maybe just do a little bit of a fodder club stock because i would not be surprised if 86s could go back up to like i don't know 14 15k i wouldn't expect these guys to go like super duper high but if you can buy an 86 rated card right now for 12,000 coins and sell it in a couple days at like 14, 15 K or, you know, even in the meantime, just lazy list it, right? You know, that sort of thing. Always be lazy listing your fodder, by the way. Like right now, look, I'm going to go snag myself a screen ER at 12. Can I get one at 12 K? Like, this is what I would try to do. Okay. He's actually 13,000 coins. So it's going to be a bit harder to get one at 12,000. But if you get like a 1K undercut on a fodder card, you're covering more than what your tax is, right? Because all these guys are under 20 K. Oh my goodness gracious. That was a minimum snipe. Anyways, um, you know, that's one way that you can try to make some coins on fodder is if we have more SBC content upcoming, which I think that we could, doing a bit of a club stock on your 85s, 86s, 87s, maybe your 88s as well, you could see these guys go up a couple thousand coins later on this week. Again, I don't know if I would expect it to be a massive rise, but since the other areas of the fodder market are moving, the low tier and the super high tier, um, that shows me that there's demand. So maybe that demand will, with one more SBC or just the lack of supply in general and not too much else to do on the game this week, you know, rise some fodder up a little bit more today. Now, why is fodder moving up a lot in the high tier? It's because of our biggest icon player SBC that we've had this year so far. Mid Eto, 90 rated Eto, 66% upvote. I mean, Eto is a big name player for sure, but do I think this SBC is worth your coins and worth your time at this stage of the game? Unless you're a huge Eto fan, no, because putting a million coins, let's say you can even do this SBC for like 750k, Unless you're a huge Eto fan, 750k worth of your fodder, worth of your coins, worth of your grind right now in this game for this SBC card, even though it is an icon, even though it's a really good card in game, with the way icons don't help your chemistry as much this year, it's just, you know, I'm not a huge fan of it. That's where I'm coming from. That's where my standpoint is on this Eto card. Yes, the value is good, but is this guy going to be 1.1 million coins in two or three weeks? um when we have all this insane world cup content that is out maybe not so that's kind of my uh, thinking there but other people must disagree because benzema and some of the your highest rated fodder cards in the game Lewandowski and benzema have gone up a lot in price benzema was like forty-three thousand coins yesterday and according to the footbin machine at the moment he is 48, 49,000 coins, right? Here's the visual representation on the graph. 43K, bang, up to 49. And there's not even like a 90 rated squad inside of Eto. I think it's like an 89 and a couple 88s. No, it's an 88 and an 89 rated squad. But these two alone, there must be some demand for Eto because people are going out and doing his SBC, as you can see, with this fodder rising. So that's why I'm saying, hey, it is a little bit of a risk because we could always have pack supply. But, you know, especially for Gerard Moreno being 21,000. Okay, he's not actually 21K. But th this is this is just panic selling on an investment right here. If you want an investment to go buy and sit on for like a month and you don't want to have to think about it, buy one of these Gerard Morenos at 21K if you can get him on a snipe and sit on his, on, on his car. Because 88s will absolutely, at some point again, go back up. Uh, to like high 20s, right? We saw them a couple weeks ago with the hero pack and I think it was the icon pack too. These guys went up to like 28, 29,000 coins. Well, this Jared Moreno is out of packs. Yes, he just got upgraded to the 88 and people were expecting him to go to like 30K, but just buy one of these, put it in the club. I did this when he was in packs at like 30K or 20K or whatever it was. Uh, I bought him at 20K. Uh, I'll just wait for him to go to 30K again. So if you can get one on snipe, less than like 22,000 coins right now, I think that's an easy dub just to hold on to for a long time. But that's why I think fodder in general might do decent. Now, it could even do better as soon as today if we get a good value SBC for a big name player, which has been leaked to be Ansu Fati. This could be big, right? This could be another piece of content that maybe comes today. I mean, since it was not released yesterday, I feel like there is opportunity for this to be dropping today. I also feel like this SBC with the trend of what EA have been doing value-wise, this one, this one could be pretty big, right? A Fati out of position 
Um, you know, I don't know if he's actually going to be a striker card. I don't know what his position is going to be. But a Fati card at this stage of the game with the Barcelona links, a lot of people have Kessi in their team. A lot of people love Usman Dembele, De Jong. There's a lot of really good ways to link an Ansu Fati card in this game right now. A card like this would be very, very popular in the game today as an SBC, and that could push fodder prices up even more if he has a good value SBC. So that's another reason to like fodder a little bit, depending on what the requirements are for the SBC, of course. Now, the other question you might ask is, Nate, should I go out and buy the Usman Dembele's or his inform? Because a lot of people bought this up when they saw the leak for the SBC. I would be careful with this. I would be careful with this because um, a lot of people are already invested, hoping that the Ansu Fati will be good value. We just had a player of the month, Lewandowski, so it's like back-to-back. -back. If, if Ansu Fati is a striker, it'd be back-to-back -back Barcelona striker SBCs in the, the past couple of days, with Higuain being out as well. Um, this Usman, I think, could go up today. I really do think that it could go maybe to like 260, but only if... Only if the value for Ansu Fati is good. It's got to be a very good value Fati, and he's got to have a lot of hype. That's the only reason I, I see this card going up today, or maybe some of your own, your other uh, Barcelona cards that a lot of people want to use in their teams. You know, the Usman Dembele comes to mind first, but maybe even like Gold de Young for a cheaper option. If you wanted to try to risk it on something like that today, you could watch out for it. Maybe even PK's Rule Breaker card. I mean, if you think about it, people are going to be able, since they already have, a lot of people have Kessie. I'm, I'm in the boat too. Kessie's incredible. But since you already have Kessie in your team, you throw, uh, you throw that um, Ansu Fati in there and that helps your chemistry out a ton. So... Watch out for your Barcelona card today. Keep an eye on them, but it's all going to depend on that Fati if he drops today and if he's good value. Those are going to be the key for fodder going up and uh, for any of those other Barcelona links going up. But if Fati is cracked, all I would say for this is let's say Fati is cracked. He's got great stats and he's decently cheap. I would say decently cheap for this would be like anything under 100, 150K if his stats are really good, right? Somewhere in that range would be, would be cheap for me. A lot of people want to go out and do that. That'd make fodder go up and it'd make some other Barcelona links go up, but it would make some other strikers in the game go down. I would be very careful, maybe even with a guy like Erling Holland. Uh, maybe even with somebody like, I don't know what position Fonte would be. You'd, of course, expect him to be central. If he's a striker, uh, you know, maybe a Brolin card, a 200K striker card that people would sell, or maybe Zaha. You'd sell Zaha to go do the SBC, that sort of thing. People will see a good value SBC, sell a card, sell a couple cards, and there might be a few panic sold strikers on, on the game today if Fati drops with really, really good stats. Now, also for Sunday content today, I think there's a little bit of potential. Since EA's been putting these packs into the code and then putting them into the game over the past two days, like really quick, we had the 80 plus packs in the code on November 3rd, two days ago, and today's the sixth. We had the, no we had the 80 plus yesterday on, on Saturday. I think we're going to see these French, England, Germany, 83 plus player pack and the Brazil, Argentina, Spain, 83 plus player pack um, released t today or tomorrow. I think it's going to be pretty soon. Now, the one thing I, I'm just kind of seeing and realizing through this is they are not listed as untradeable. If these are tradable packs, then a France, England, Germany, 83 plus player pack. Think about how many players are very popular that could be supplied on the market tradable through those packs if they are tradable, right? A Ferland Mendy might be semi common from a pack like that, right? Think of the from the Brazil one, Vinny Jr. And, you know, Mbappe, that would still be crazy to hit, right? Usman Dembele's gold card. Kyle Walker is an 85 rated. Kunde. Teo Hernandez, of course, you're going to have guys like, you know, Trap and those guys that you're not going to want to pack very much being from the German nationality in this pack, right? Not saying that you don't want Trap all the time, but hey, a lot of people probably wouldn't. So there's going to be a lot of fodder cards that will be packable from that SBC, like PK, Coke, Luis Alberto, and the Spanish one, right? There's so many Spanish boards this year. That pack will probably not be fun to open, but especially the other one, uh, it's going to have English, France, and Germany. I mean, there's a lot of French cards that a lot of people would like to have that are 83 plus. So if that pack's tradable, that could wreak some havoc on the market today even more as well. If it's, you know, it, it feels like it should be an untradable pack, but since it doesn't really explicitly say that, who knows? I know it doesn't say untradable for the 80 plus team of the week player pack, and it's obviously untradable in the game. So we'll just have to see what happens with that sort of 
pack dropping. Uh, if it's tradable, it would definitely impact the market a lot. But you know, I, I just don't know when that pack is going to drop. It seems like today could be a day for it, but I don't know if it's going to be tradable or untradable. So just be careful with that on the game today as well. I feel like there's potential for those. But again, with the way EA is doing content right now, it is seriously just every single day is a question mark and we have no idea what's going to be dropping on the game unless we have some leaks or something right ahead of time uh, because the content right now just seems to be very very random so that's kind of what i'm doing on the market right i have i have put some coins into some fodder uh some 86s you can see here i just stocked up right i'm buying a few of, of each of these 86s put on my transfer list i have a couple of robbie Keens that i bought in the low 200s because i thought he was pretty low and let me talk about this again if, if you're trying to be like nate i want to try to fluctuation trade i'm seeing these graphs i'm seeing the movements how are you finding these cards where are you looking uh, I just want to show you guys that a little bit and how I'm trying to find these cards because, you know, it's not easy for sure. And there's definitely risk involved, but there's also really great opportunities for profits. Smolly Rec is 250. What did he do yesterday? Smolly Rec went from 290 down to 239 back to 270. All right. If he goes back down to like, again, he's only 10K away from his absolute lowest price from what he was yesterday. He could bounce back to 270 again today. Absolutely. Right. That's where I'm looking on the market or... Uh, Rudy Valer, we said, was 420. He, he needs to go down some more. Yaya, of course, we saw was bouncing back. He's 1.05, and he needs to go higher, but needs to go lower if we're going to try to buy one of his cards. Just really try to learn some of these out-of-pack prices on the game. Wow, Rib Ree is getting pretty low. Sissoko, that's really low for him as well. Tiago with 325, that's pretty cheap. Like, these guys that fluctuate. I'm pretty sure Rib Ree was like 730 yesterday. 700 to 750 down to 648 wow yeah he went from 640 to 730 so and uh now he's back to 689 so crazy fluctuation on some of these out of packs cards that's going to be your best place to go to find the panic selling and to try to make um profitable flips and icons for sure icons for sure are really really good to be trading with on the moment or at the moment on the market as well so that's what i'd be doing if i was trying to find the rare card fluctuation flips is i really do like the heroes i know i mentioned them a couple of times heroes are just good because they they move up and down a lot and they're still in demand and they're pretty rare but i'll say this too like a betty pele hasn't dropped off that much right he was like five okay he was 580 so he has i thought he was still like 530 so yesterday i bet he went from 528 down to 440 that was an insane drop you know if i see 420 or something like that if he drops if some of these cards drop lower than where they were yesterday and they still look decently rare then you're going to have opportunities to flip them on the bounce back and there'll be opportunities for profit there so that's one thing i would say to look for as well is watch cards that drop lower than what they were yesterday if they get there that's a big w uh, for the potential flip opportunity and to make coins on any of those cards. So I'm going to be very careful in the market. I think it is best to be very careful, but I think that some of those fodder moves could be a place where we put our coins into over the next couple of days. And honestly, we just continue to wait and see what EA Sports is going to do today on a Sunday. I really hope that Ansu Fati SBC drops. That'd be a really hype SBC. So hopefully EA bring the business and we could see some market movements around that and potential to make some coins. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It is great to be back and rolling in business. We will be streaming today. It'll be a bit later, but make sure you tune in on the Twitter. That link is down below in the description to check things out there. It'll be good to be back on the stream as well. But for now, it's been Nate the Foot Accountant, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.